Hello everyone, this is Sekiro from Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. In this mini presentation, I want to discuss Ahorizmi. So Ahorizmi lived in the late 8th to the mid 9th century in Persia. He spent most of his lifetime in Baghdad. Here in this image, you can see him holding a astrolabe toward the sky. So an astrolabe is an ancient astronomical instrument and it's a handheld model to show the universe. So this statue is now in Tehran, Iran. Today, Ahorizmi is remembered mostly for his great contribution to algebra. Here is a stamp from the Soviet Union to commemorate him. The stamp was issued in 1983 and here I put a note for myself to see that well, this is a good example to see cross-cultural celebration of mathematical achievement. And I would love to explore more later on. So Ahorizmi spent most of his lifetime in the House of Wisdom in Baghdad. One can see this organization as a national library or a research center in the modern eyes. Baghdad was then a center of political powers in the Islamic world. Compared to numerous restrictions of scientific development in the medieval Europe, the Islamic world, on the other hand, was experiencing its golden age, politically and culturally speaking. Baghdad therefore attracted scholars and intellectuals from various cultures, not limited to the Islamic world. In this highly intellectual atmosphere, Aurismi worked on translating preserved Greek scientific manuscript, and noticeably, he himself also benefited from earlier translations from Greek to Arabic, done right in the House of Wisdom. And all the translations later became the foundation of his mathematical achievement. Along with translation, he also wrote extensively on algebra, geometry, and astronomy. Ahorizmi is nowadays reckoned as the father of algebra because of his further development of ancient Greek mathematician Dalfentu's work. Here is the cover of Dalfentu's book being translated into Latin in the Middle Age in Europe. And yet, much earlier than Europeans' contemplation over the unknown, Ahorizmi had compiled her theories in this book. So here you can see the title in Arabic, and the English translation is the compendious book on calculation by completion and balancing. So the Arabic word alja basically can be translated roughly into completion in English. So as highlighted here, the word alja later evolved into English as algebra today. In this book, Ahorizmi documented systematic ways of solving linear and quadratic equations. Interestingly, as historians of mathematics have been debating, Ahorizmi seemed to deserve more the title for the father of algebra than Dalfentus did. Well, it's simply because Dalfentus, during his lifetime, he focused more on the practicality of solving equations. On the other hand, Ahorizmi was the first one to theorize the solving process with symbols. So Ahorizmi used both algebraic and geometric method to solve quadratic equations. Here is an example. So here, in figure 1, he started with a square of x as its side. So the area of the square would be x to the second power. In figure 2, he added 5x over 2, and it's multiplied by 4, so eventually you get 10x. So here we've got x to the second power, sorry, there's a typo here, plus 10x equals 39. In figure number 3, the square is completed by adding the four tiny corner squares, 25 over 4. 
Therefore, we can get 25 over 4 multiplied by 4 plus 4 equals 64. So here, 64, that would be the area of the huge square. So we know that the side would be 8. So here you can see that the side is actually the sum of 5 over 2 times 2 plus x equals 8. So we can solve this equation to get x equals 3. So you can see that that's the algebraic expression, and here that's the ge geometric solution to the problem. The geometric me method drew my attention not only because some historians of mathematics saw this as a proof that Al-Khwarizmi was influenced by Euclid's elements. It also drew my attention because of its pedagogical use, well, for me as a middle school math teacher. This image, very interestingly, also revealed that the negative solution to this quadratic equation here, negative 13, was not considered as an official answer back then. So, Ahorizmi's text started to be translated into Latin in the 12th century. This marked the onset of using algebra as the name for this significant branch in mathematics. Here is an image of a page from Ahorizmi's book. Seeing the translation of ancient Greek texts into Arabic and later translation of Arabic texts into Latin and, of course, many other uh, European languages, I really feel amazed and cannot help but see Al-Khwarizmi, among other Islamic math mathematicians, as the bridge between cultures. The universality of mathematics is very obvious here to me. So, in addition to algebra, Al-Khwarizmi was famous for the invention of algorithm. Even though algorithm is predominantly as part of computer science nowadays, it originally meant step-by-step step as being visualized in this image here. Interestingly, algorithm was believed to derive from a direct translation of Al-Khwarizmi, the name, into Latin. So here one can see the importance of algorithm not only in mathematics but also later computer science. Also, being a bridge between the West and the East, algorithm introduced Indian decimal positional number system to the West as a really important replacement of Roman numerals. I would argue the numerical simplification brought more mathematical achievement in centuries to come. So here's the end of my mini presentation number one, and this is my reference page. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.